I didn't know each other, um, but we were each bloggers and we had each gone from blogging to actually consulting with others about blogging. So I had actually started blogging as a personal thing, but I came from a marketing background. So I had what I call my peanut butter chocolate moment, where I realized that blogging would be a really powerful marketing tool. So I started working with companies directly to add blogging to their marketing strategy. And this was back in 2004, so it was pretty early. Um, Jory was also blogging as part of her personal sort of talk. She wanted to be an author. She was um, blogging about her sort of journey um, through the working world. Uh, but she was also consulting with companies about launching blog networks and services. And Lisa was a former journalist who was started out blogging for the LA Times about the uh, 2004 DNC convention mm -hmm. and then started consulting with companies about, again, launching blog networks and, and mostly focus on the editorial and content side. So we didn't know each other. We were each doing different things, but I met Lisa through a mutual friend who said, you guys need to talk to each other. I think we were probably the only two people he knew who blogged, and we were both blogging around politics, so he probably was like, stop talking to me and talk to each other. Um, and we kept missing each other, and so finally we decided we'll just go and have coffee. Um, and around that time, it was early 2005, and there was this meme going around, where are the women? And, and it wasn't just about blogging or tech. It was after Carly Fiorina had been pushed out of HP. So there was this where are the women um, in Fortune 500 boardrooms. Uh, and it was um, right after a report had come out about the 2004 election that talked about the dearth of women and minorities on op-ed pages and on the Sunday morning talk shows. Where are the women in punditry? And um, yes, there were conversations about where are the women in tech? And specifically, where are the women who blog? And in particular, a guy who wrote a political blog wrote this post, Where Are the Women Who Blog? And it was a rhetorical question because he had the answer, women didn't blog because they don't want to debate and they don't want to support their ideas and they, you know, it's a rough and tumble world and, and sort of like, you know, we are delicate flowers or something. And so Lisa and I both having been blogging in this space, along with all the other women who were doing so, um, were pretty outraged about it, and of course we were all blogging about it. When we had this coffee, Lisa said to me, you know, I was thinking, um, if you had a conference that was just like all the other conferences, tech conferences, covered all the same subjects, but all the experts and speakers just happened to be women, do you think anyone would be interested? And I said, well, I would totally go to that. You know, we should do that. And so we just decided to do it at meeting that first time. Meanwhile, I met Jory sitting next to her at a conference, and so I didn't know her. Uh, we just had a really great conversation. And so when Lisa and I, after just a very short like two weeks, were like, wow, this is actually going to be a lot of work. Neither one of us had produced an event before, so we were like, three heads would definitely be better than two. And I was like, oh, I met this really cool woman. Let me just call her and see if she wants to help. And at first we just asked her to help with a couple of you know tasks, but then she said to us, so how are, you, how are you paying for this? And we said, oh, you know, we're charging people $99. She's like, are you gonna feed them? Are you going to have internet? Are you going to have microphones? Are you going to have, um, you know, she kind of went down the list and we we're like, oh, she's like, you need my help, you need sponsors. And we're like, okay. So she came on board and, and helped us. She had worked for a company that put on events. So she was very aware of how critical sponsorship is to really put on quality production values. Um, and so that's how we kind of all came together. And we just, you know, we didn't form a company. We, we like to say we weren't a for-profit, we weren't a non-profit. We were three chicks with credit cards who put the deposit on a meeting space and blogged the idea and said, hey, anybody interested? And found out that lots and lots of women were very, very interested. And 120 days later, we had a sold out event with 300 people. And we sat around Lisa's kitchen table, you know, a week or two later and said, wow, what are we going to do with all that energy and passion and, and community and the women who really wanted something to continue out of that? And so that's kind of a long story, but that's how we started. It must have been overwhelming at the first when we got up there the first day, well, you know, like we said, people ask where are the women bloggers, and I guess you can say here we are, um, just to see all those people who really showed up. And what was interesting is the guy who wrote that first blog post showed up. We invited him, and he came, yes. 
and several other um, male bloggers who had kind of looked askance at the whole idea um, showed up and came to check it out. You know, we actually have them to thank because prominent, we weren't that prominent, Lisa Jory and I were not well known. And several well-known male bloggers were kind of offended at the idea that this would be necessary. And they actually brought us a lot of attention by criticizing it. And I've always wanted to thank them for, you know, uh, sort of getting people like, we, we had coverage from CNN and MSNBC. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly because we were getting this sort of criticism about d doing something focused on women. Uh, and uh, it, uh, as they say, sometimes, you know, um, any PR can be good PR. You know, I think one one thing is the diversity of women and how blogging really um, erases boundaries in a way because when you're connecting online, you're really not very aware of people's geography, of people's, um, you know, like people blogging about parenting a three-year-old are likely dealing with many of the same issues no matter where they live, no matter what their income level is, no matter, I mean, some things are universal. So blogging really breaks a lot of boundaries and helps people relate and become friends who would never meet each other in person if they lived in totally different neighborhoods. You know, they wouldn't intersect in their mommies and me group, for an example. So I think sort of cross-pollinating and, and really um, highlighting the diversity of the community um, is, is really important. And the other thing is really helping women um, accomplish their goals with why they're blogging. And their goals can be really different from one another. So some women really have no interest in making money. They really want to form a community. They want to find support. They want to work on their writing. It's all about self-expression. And, um, and that's great. And, and they, but, but doing that in a community is you know, powerful for them. But some women, they, they think, wow, I found something I really love and I'm good at it. So, you know, they always say, do what you love, the money will follow. Why can't I do that with this? Mm -hmm. And to help women actually do that is also really rewarding. And to, so, you know, our, our mission is all about creating opportunities for these women who blog. And so those opportunities can range from education to helping them get more exposure to just putting them together and helping them find community. And yes, to helping them have economic empowerment and, um, you know, every time that we can help someone achieve a goal that they had, that maybe sometimes they started out they didn't know they had, um, that's really rewarding. When bloggers started, Facebook was still for college students. There was no Twitter. Um, it was a very, very different landscape. We were always saying this is going to be the big year of mobile, but it never actually was came until really this past year. Um, so it was a very different environment. Uh, social tools like Twitter and Facebook are kind of a blogger's best friend because the blog, for women who blog, uh, the blog is their platform. The blog is where they get to say what they feel. It's where they establish their credibility and expertise. It's where they get to, you know, here's who I am. Here's my piece of the internet. But Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Flickr and all of these tools uh, and, and Hashable and any of them are about saying, um, come check me out. You know, they are they are a great place to promote your platform and bring more people to what you're doing and let more people see your work. So, um, from a blogging point of view and from a publisher point of view, Facebook and Twitter are awesome for just spreading the word. From a user like point of view and and from a customer support point of view, of course, it adds to the the 24 seven always on um, aspect of being online. It already kind of felt that way because blogging is great because it feels like a real time conversation but people can actually, can actually be lasting over hours. So the conversation's there for you when you wake up in the morning, there's more comments and you can just dive right in. Things like Twitter start to feel like really, like they're, they're always on, you've gotta be always on. Um, but it is a great way to constantly be in touch with your community and really have your finger on the pulse about what they care about, what's bubbling up, what's important, what questions they have, what complaints they have. What Like today we launched a new design on our website and been on Twitter this morning and just gathering the feedback and talking back to people and telling them we appreciate them ta you know, checking it out. And um, you know, that that tool is, is extremely important in our community. Uh, I, I love Twitter. I mean, I am actually a Twitter holic, and I'm on it all the time. And, yeah. and I'm I'm on it. I can't. 
I don't dedicate I don't dedicate specific time to Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. I'm always looking at Twitter. I'm just, but I don't, you know, I follow hundreds and hundreds of people, but it's not like I stand in the stream of all that information. I have all these Twitter lists and Twitter groups and Twitter search term feeds. So I'm really paying attention to who's, who's talking about blog her, who's saying hi to me, who's from our employees and our editors, what are they up to, who are these social media, I track in, in chunks. And then every now and then, particularly if I'm sitting and waiting somewhere I'll dip into the stream of just everyone I ever follow and see what's going on you know I was just talking to a guy who works for eBay and he was telling me about the number of people and it's something like two million people now who make their living purely from selling stuff on eBay right and and that um, this was a, a way of this was a job description that didn't exist ten years ago so I think blogging is delivering the same opportunity to women. There are women now who either make their entire living or contribute significantly to their household income via an online, a personal online platform. It's, this did not exist, you know, even seven years ago, six years ago when bloggers started really. Um, it's, nobody was making their living from it. Nobody was really getting the full power out of um, the kind of influence they were developing online. So I think that now people are getting very savvy about, uh, we're really working cross-platform now, across mobile platforms, across social tools, across blogging, across all of these things. Um, and um, the opportunity to monetize all of that, the opportunity to create an even bigger sandbox in which you can interact and, and, um, and contribute to your, your own income is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's only, people are only going to get more savvy about it and more um, take better advantage of it. And it's empowering. It's very, very empowering for women. Um, and especially, you know, for women who maybe were not in the traditional full-time workforce. There's different kinds of blogs, actually, and so being good at them requires different kinds of skills. There are the blogs that are resources, and they, whether they're resources about a very narrow topic or more broad, they are always paying attention to the news, they are always posting it quickly, they are always, it's not really about their commentary, it's just that they are a resource to what's the hottest thing in X subject. That's a totally viable method of blogging. It's useful. Uh, sometimes you hear it called a signpost blog. Like, like you just come here and they'll tell you everything you need to know about tech, everything you need to know about figure skating or whatever it is. Um, and that requires being quick, being kind of pulling in all the information and getting it up there quickly, from all, aggregating from all those sources. Um, for a lot of people, though, what they really want is to be a writer and to um, have people like their writing and probably the most important thing is and I'm not one of those people who believes you have to have laser focus I know plenty of successful bloggers who talk about one thing one day and another thing the other day but what is consistent what is focused is that it's always in their voice and it's always it's always a distinguishable voice that when you, you know, like I used to say, if you met me in person and said, oh my God, you sound, you look, you talk just like your blog, I'd be like, awesome, then I have achieved my goal. And vice versa, if someone met me and then you went and read any of my sadly neglected blogs, yeah. um, but if you <laughs> read any of my blogs, hopefully, uh, you know, after meeting me, you would go read my blogs and say, you could totally hear yeah. me in your head. And this, this is a time honored tradition of personalities, you know, and people following personalities and being interested in, in their voice and um, and so really writing about what you I mean it's the same same advice you get in any kind of writing you know write about what you know write about what you care about and write about it um, as only you can and not how everybody else could mm -hmm.